and has its hands in every pie. I guess it makes sense, right? Economics are part of the world. It's how we function. And so he's in environmental things, I mean, you name it. He's written books and articles all over the map. And so uh, we always love to see what he wants to share with us. And we had talked about, well, what about politics? He's done this before. And uh, we all need lots of help from now to November, don't we, surviving? So he's <laughs> gone. David, why don't you come up with something on politics? So here he is. Thanks, David. Thank you for inviting me. It's great to be at the part of my car in a parking lot where my coexist bumper sticker is among many. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we are kindred spirits. Uh, <coughs> most religious person, uh, but I'll be praying a lot on November 8th. <laughs> uh, in fact, I suspect people around the country and the world will be praying like never before. It may be a, a new world record for praying. As an economist, I'd like to say a bit about research findings that can inform what we hope and pray for and discuss some reasons why Kentucky is a red state. There are many ingredients in the recipe for a state's political leaning. The issues that matter to the citizens of Kentucky are influenced, for example, by the fact that we are a relatively rural state, so we don't have the pro-workers union vote for Democrats seen in the Rust Belt. I'm from Michigan. Uh, someone, yeah, yeah, you were yeah, cheering yeah, Michigan, yeah, go yeah. Michigan. Uh, a lot of that, a lot of unions, not so much now, but at least when the political leanings were established. And Kentucky is a state with relatively little religious diversity. Almost every person who identifies themselves as being religious in Kentucky is Christian. Uh, we said a Jewish prayer earlier today, but uh, our population in Kentucky is 0.3% Jewish, mm -hmm. compared with 4.1% in Massachusetts and 8.9% in New York. As another example, our population is 0.26% Muslim in Kentucky, compared with 10 times that in Illinois and in New York. So Kentuckians are less likely to vote for candidates who support religious diversity. We are also a coal-producing site state, so fewer Kentucky voters support candidates who have ambitious environmental agendas. These reasons all contribute to Kentucky being a red state. I'd like to talk more about things that make less sense than people voting for their selfish interests, like people voting against their interests. A common frustration uh, that I hear is that people see signs in people's yards supporting candidates whose policies on, say, education and environmental protection and social programs would particularly disadvantage the people posting those signs. How do we make sense of that? Maybe there are some misunderstandings. Politicians who need votes from people whose policy uh, pe Politicians who need votes from people their policies don't serve have reason to divert voters' attention toward other issues the voters care about, often in misleading ways. The big secret is that Fox News and MSNBC both keep is that in most cases we all want the same thing, really. Here are 10 examples of misinformation that I feel are important for us to clear up. People are often misled that Obama and Clinton want to ban guns. We heard that again on Friday, explicitly. This couldn't be farther from the truth. They are misled to, misled to believe that one party wants more abortions. We should teach the difference between being pro-choice and wanting more abortions. Being pro-choice means we want education and birth control and women's rights and we don't want to send women, force women, into back alley butcher shops. People are often misled to believe that one party is okay with welfare fraud. Of course not. No one wants welfare fraud. Let's stop pretending this and work together to find ways to fight fraud. They're misled to believe that one party doesn't want to balance the budget. They're misled to believe that one party wants regulations with costs that exceed benefits. 
They're misled to believe that one party isn't for personal responsibility. No. Now, I think everyone wants a level playing field so that consumers can make wise decisions about potentially dangerous products. They're misled to believe that one party wants taxes for which the costs exceed the benefits. They're misled to believe that one party wants more government, but the other party wants more spending on the government's largest budget item, the military, and more regulations on who can marry and on abortion. They're misled to believe that one party will allow too much immigration. Nobody wants too much. Again, it should all be about comparing costs and benefits. They're misled to believe that one party, one party will cause job loss with environmental regulations. In fact, already in the United States, there are more jobs from solar energy than there are from coal. We all want fewer abortions, no welfare fraud, a balanced budget, jobs, and regulations and taxes and government growth and immigration only when the benefits exceed the costs. How are Kentuckians misled? As humans, we are all tempted to let emotions affect our beliefs and to believe what we want to believe. And in Kentucky, there are challenges such as education. We are ninth lowest <coughs> in average ACT scores. We are the fourth lowest for high school graduation rates at 81.7%. That can feed into gullibility. And what about religion? Kentucky has the 12th largest percentage of adults who self-identify as being politically conservative, while the 11th largest percentage of adults who pray daily, tied with Texas, the tenth largest percentage who say religion is very important in their lives, tied with Texas, and the sixth largest percentage who believe in God, tied with Louisiana. There are many great things about religion. My father is a Methodist minister and a religion professor. But at the extremes, faith can get in the way of one's attention to facts. Yeah. Ours is the state with the museum that teaches people that the world started a few thousand years ago because the Bible says so. And religious beliefs play into voting based on those issues that politicians try to divert our voters toward, like gay marriage and abortion. We are swimming in this information, and I'd like to provide some clarity in three areas that relate to my own research or teaching to help prevent people from being misled. And I hope you can pass some of this on. First, don't be misled to believe that crime is on the rise. I give this five out of five Pinocchios. <laughs> As one who conducts research on the extent of the crime problem, I'd like to reassure you that the truth is the opposite of what we're hearing. Of course, uh, if you look hard enough, you can always find some city somewhere where some crime statistic is up since some other period of time. But the truth is that in the United States, since the current administration took office, crime rates in every major category are down. Violent crime as a whole, murder, rape, robbery, aggravated assault, property crime as a whole, burglary, larceny, motor vehicle theft. Murder and non-negligent manslaughter rates are down in the United States. They've been falling steadily from 5.7 per 100,000 in 2007 uh, to 4.5 for 100,000 in 2014, which is the last year in which the FBI has data available. Uh, we'll get 2015 data in just a few weeks. Let's talk about trade. Trade is something that virtually all economists favor. Uh, and, and I want to look at a graph. I'll try to raise my voice. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, uh, economists think in graphs. There are a few economists in the room, and I think they'll vouch for this. So I decided to bring you graphs. This is the way that I communicate, uh, and it may or may not be useful, but it's the way I think. So, so this, this is the graph that I think of every time I think about free trade. So we have two countries, uh, say the United States and South Korea, and suppose that each country produces only two goods, bikes and phones. 
And let's also suppose that Samsung actually has their phones so they don't blow up. <laughs> in South Korea. Likewise, in the United States, we go up one bike per phone. Every time South Korea makes another phone, if they went to 15, from zero phones to 15, they would give up a third as many bikes. So a phone costs a third of a bike. Now suppose that they trade. Right? We can look at which country has the lowest opportunity cost of making bikes. Right? It costs us one phone, costs a, South Korea three, so we have the lower cost of making bikes. We should specialize in bikes. It costs them a third of a bike to make a phone, costs us a whole bike to make a phone. So they have what we call a comparative advantage in making phones. They should make phones like they, like they actually do, right? We, we, even iPhone is not made in the United States. Uh, they make what they have a comparative advantage in making. We might make what we have a comparative advantage in making. And then we trade at a price that's in between what it costs them to make them on their own and what it would cost us. Suppose we trade one bike from the United States where we can make bikes at a relatively low cost. That's what we're good at. <coughs> for two South Korean phones. With trade, instead of being stuck on these red lines and having to choose along here, we give up a bike, we get two phones instead of one. So we can go outside of our constraint for no trade. We can go along the green line and have more <coughs> of both. They give up two phones instead of three phones for each bike, so they can go outside of their constraint from no trade. They can have more of both with trade. Every country can have more of everything with free trade. These green lines are what I think of every time I hear somebody saying, oh no, we gotta be protectionist, we gotta stop trade, we need quotas and tariffs. What we do with all of that, it sounds good, you know, let's buy everything from ourselves. It sounds good, but what you're really doing is giving each country less of everything. We can have more of everything. We can go from points along here to having more phones and more bikes, and in the real world, it's more of all the things that we trade with free trade. So free trade is a, is a good thing. Uh, and uh, I don't know if that made any sense or not, but I wanted to try you know, bringing in a little bit of an econ lesson. Uh, uh, one or two other things I want to mention. Uh, the economy as a whole, we've heard a lot about that. Since 2007, we have cut the unemployment rate in half. We have almost tripled the Dow Industrial Average. We have dodged any sort of double dip recession. People complain about household income levels, but even after correcting for inflation, the median household income is substantially higher than it was in the early 1980s under Ronald Reagan. It's higher now after correcting for inflation, albeit not as high as in the late 1990s under Clinton. Hmm, how could we rekindle those times? <laughs> Our economy is better off <coughs> by virtually every measure. Share the facts about crime and trade and the economy widely. Help citizens act in their best interests. And when anyone starts down that road of half-truths and mistruths, help them find the facts, which isn't so hard these days. Ride on that information superhighway. When you get that ugly email from Aunt, Ag Aunt Agnes with a falsely attributed quote or a photoshopped image, I just got one yesterday, Hillary Clinton standing next to a woman who purportedly had a, a sign on her shirt that said, I'm with stupid. <laughs> it's fake, it's fake. Point them to Snopes.com. Have you seen Snopes? Yes. That's my favorite. Snopes, S-N-O-P-E-S.com. They 
go after every single myth that I've tried to find on there. Every time, you know, we all have these friends who send these ridiculous things that couldn't be true and they believe them. Snopes has a long explanation of things like, uh, things that I've been tempted to worry about, like all the connections between the Clintons and people who have died. They have long explanations about all of these things. Crime data, I think we'll hear more about that. The real numbers are available on fbi.gov. Economic data is available on wonderful websites like that of our Federal Reserve Bank for our region, the St. Louis Fed and the Bureau of Economic Analysis. And steer clear of facts from museums shaped like boats that cannot <laughs> that's that's what I wanted to share. Some thoughts on we got to ground ourselves in facts and some real economic facts going against what we're hearing. Uh, what, what's on your mind? I think the the violence. You know, <laughs> the violence issue is um, big for me. Um, just, I think there's so much fear about terrorism, and I don't know. I know. The, I believe the statistics you talked about, but then there's what I see in the paper every day about people blowing things up, and that's where I think the fear is so. You talked about faith over facts. And then there's fear, especially fear over facts. Yeah. The fear is so big. We, we have to be careful about, on, about misestimating the risks of highly publicized problems. When we see things in the newspaper, uh, whether it's a shark attack or a terrorist attack or a kidnapping, uh, we tend to think that a lot of things that are far less likely than they would appear uh, are something that we need to prioritize. Uh, so, so look at the numbers on things like. Uh, well, like what are the numbers on those things, though? Isn't there an increase in terrorist activity? The uh, I don't have that number on the top off of my head, but um, those are the types of things that a Google search will give you in an instant. So, uh, don't worry, Google. <laughs> that, 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 that would be my advice, and you know, I, I suspect that you can find some types of things that there might be an uptick if you look between the right two years. Uh, but overall, every type of crime that you can imagine is uh, we, we have a very strong general decline. So it'd be worth a check. Uh, one one thing I'm seeing is that if, that if if you repeat something enough times, people will believe it, and you'll begin to believe it yourself. <laughs> um, but um, I guess about a month or two ago, I was talking to a coworker, and uh, anyway, he was talking about how awful it was that the deficit was so much bigger and stuff. And I, mm -hmm. I said, but I think the deficit is smaller. Oh, no, no, no. it's much, much larger now. It's, it's, yeah, if you look at it, uh, of course, in absolute terms, because every you know inflation causes everything <coughs> to get bigger over time. But if you look at it uh, relative to the percentage of our gross national product, uh, we've been here before. You know, we're right around 100 percent of our GNP, and we've been there before. So it's not shattering records. In that. And, and and of course, the last time we had uh, Clinton in office uh, was the only time since before since. <laughs> Jimmy Carter, for, I think, when uh, the uh, we've actually had a surplus on an annual basis. We had a sur an annual surplus that caused a dip in our overall deficit. Uh, so we did have that dip, uh, but on a percentage of GDP, it's not. It's not. People confuse high. debt and deficit. Yeah, the, there's the the deficit is the accumulation of all of our past debts. Every year we have a certain debt or uh, uh, or surplus, uh, and then over time, the debt adds up to the the, the, the larger twenty. Uh, what is it? Twenty trillion that we're at. Yeah, 
but we had an annual surplus under Clinton. Um, I think that uh, what you said, those are their, that those are overriding interests. It might not be in their best interest to vote the way that they are. Yeah. No. Thank you. Just going back to the question about uh, war terrorism, one of the falsehoods that went around, you know, they used against uh, a Democratic candidate is about Benghazi. Uh -huh. uh, Fact-checked uh, statistics were brought out, though, of like how many of these attacks have been in the last several administrations. There were more attacks, more people killed, including in ambassadors, etc., under Republican administrations. Uh, and someone can fact-check that. This is one incident, however tragic, that's been blown up far out of proportion. There were far more such incidences involved in other administrations. It was not unique to a Democratic administration. Good <coughs> point. Didn't, didn't you speak last time about um, how certain parties tend to go more than the Democrats? Maybe. Last yeah. time, yeah. <laughs> no, just kind of what we're talking about. Yeah. So, what, uh, I don't think about how to phrase this. I'm just spit that. <laughs> <laughs> right. What misinformation <laughs> uh, is, is there in the liberal narrative that we need yeah. to be on the watch for? That's good. Good point. Donald Trump doesn't really have small hands. <laughs> <laughs> the other parts I'm, I can't vouch for. <laughs> I, I, I heard a a uh, joke about the Donald Trump sandwich, the uh, white bread, a lot of bologna, uh, Russian dressing, and a very small pickle. Okay. But, but, but it's just a minute. I withdraw my question. <laughs> that's a serious answer to that. That's, that's pretty ridiculous. What I'm asking is for something beyond preaching to the choir. Well, one that I would say is that... Oh my God. One that I would say is that uh, MSNBC would have us believe that uh, that conservatives don't care about the environment, and I think they do. I think that uh, they see things differently. They don't perceive the problem to be as bad as other people do, but I think that they do. Uh, you know that just like everybody wants fewer abortions, everybody wants to the environment to be okay. Everybody, nobody wants global warming to destroy the planet. It's just a matter of what information we've been privy to and whether we believe it's a big problem already or not, whether we believe there's, that we need to do more about it or not. I'm, I'm interested in how people decide who to vote for. Uh, there are a lot of single issue people uh, there are a lot of people who vote on who their neighbors vote on, yards, yard signs, without any data. And most of the, the, of course, all the campaigning is negative. So, you know, you have to really work hard. And how many people bother? You know, we're, we're in the 0.2% for the conversation like this. Right. Where's the um, best place to go? But how do we how do we talk to other people about learning? Mm -hmm. uh, I think just focusing on grounding it in the facts. You know, instead of batting around these fake quotes, these fake pictures, these fake ideas, these fake assertions. Uh, somebody brings up an issue, and step one is, well, let's get the the real data on this. Let's find out. Uh, and if they say something ridiculous say, you know, what would it take to change your mind? And if there's nothing that would change their mind about something like global warming, then you can just establish, okay, so we're not basing this discussion on facts, we're just we're basing this on emotions. Uh, and if we establish that, then it's a different ballgame. But grounded in facts, not uh, from MSNBC or Fox, but <laughs> from, uh, you know, FBI.gov or something. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, can I, may I make two points? So um, the mantra made in the USA, right, in terms of going back to your chart and all of that, um, it's the companies that have gone outside of this box, USA, and gone to other countries because cheaper labor mm -hmm. and, and all of that, what that implies. Mm -hmm. So made in the USA sounds wonderful, mm -hmm. okay? And maybe it used to be that way back in whenever, mm -hmm. but that's not what the world is like now, and that's not what corporations are like now. So how do you, how do, how do you deal with that? What, what are some of the points you could make about, okay, that sounds great, but this is the reality. Uh, like how to make people aware that things aren't really made here, or how to get well, more made here? How, how, well, in a sense, maybe how to get more made here, but then that would lead to corporations coming back, okay, and not going outside of the country. How do we equate that so people realize, well, I'm looking for a t-shirt, and all I can see is China, or whatever, whatever, but nothing made in the USA, and I want to buy things that my country made. Well, I, I think a couple of things. I think in terms of some types of manufacturing, I think the labor-intensive manufacturing, a lot of the textiles, is probably not going to come back. I think labor-intensive countries are going to make labor-intensive goods, mm -hmm. and we can specialize in things that we're better at, you know, whether it's education. We have uh, you know, millions of people from around the world buying our educations or software or things like that. We're specializing in services that we're better at. But there is an artificial uh, departure of a lot of corporations for tax break purposes. And that's something that we need to clamp down on. We need to make sure that there isn't uh, a way to dodge taxes by going offshore and then selling the same stuff uh, back to us. Thank you. Um, I have a number of friends who are, I'll use the term, very religious. And a conversation with them, they know how I feel. Um, and a conversation with them can only go so far because the final word from them is God will decide. And so therefore, and I'm not deriding that at all, but if the conversation just stops, I mean, you can give them fact, you can give them anything, but it's God who will make up whatever occurs to me from day to day and minute to minute. And that, to me, it is a, it's a, there's a wall that comes down. And yeah. It's very difficult to, in fact, get past that wall. That doesn't mean one shouldn't keep trying. As my friends know, I will. But on the other hand, <laughs> but on the other hand it is a very uh, difficult, yeah place to get past. Yeah, I have a friend who dismisses every concern about any group or any you know environment or anything else as saying, well, that earthquake or that volcano in is it Yosemite or Yellowstone? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna end everything. It's gonna end the world very soon anyway. And of course other people feel that about religious exactly. happenings. So you know why care about anything? Yeah. Mm. Really? Uh, yeah. When you say why Kentucky votes red, what I'm thinking is, and I'm going to ask you if this is right, it, it's kind of down to their family background. My family's always voted this way, and I vote this way because my family votes this way. And I grew up in eastern Kentucky, so Lee County, Owsley County, Wolf County, all those counties are consistently on the poorest counties in the nation, consistently those counties uh, over there. And they will vote against their own best interests. But in my head, somehow, I think it's because of family. My, you know, my family voted that way. I, I don't know if that's ever been researched, but do you think that that's correct? Yeah, I mean, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Uh, traditions die hard, and a lot of the reasons that I talked about have been have existed for decades and centuries, and so yeah, you know. Many of us are children of people who voted the same way, and our children vote the same way. So tradition and culture are important. To you, you're an exception. <laughs> yeah, there are exceptions. David, I want to thank you very much for a, a very 
We can't hear you. Yeah, you're going to have to speak up. That one's not working very well. There we go. Beat it into submission. Where thousands and thousands of Jews who left uh, prior to the Holocaust and they can still escape Germany went to England. And they were put in internment camps on the Isle of uh, Man. Uh, 56,000 were, were housed there because of the bias and prejudice against uh, Jews and also because they were German and thought they might be spies. And it makes me think about uh, one of the candidates who's running for presidency. I don't recall his name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a classmate in college of mine, by the way. Uh, he was a year behind me in school. But uh, in any event, who's claiming that the Muslims represent such a terror and that they need to be all cataloged the same. It's the same uh, venue, the same thoughts, the same philosophy that we saw that happened in 1940 with the Jews in England. Yeah, scary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is it? I have the mic. Is it on? I've got. Can you hear me? Oh, there you go. I fell asleep at the controls. Um, <laughs> I have become convinced that when it comes to politics and religion, facts don't matter. What matters is personal experience, bias and perception, uh, money matters, and the tone of the candidate. So which tone do you prefer uh, to hear for the next four years? Yeah. I would just uh, consistent. 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 I was just going to add that um, when Christians uh, I'm having difficulty, you know, and, and we're having a hard time with the argument. To me, it's the, what would Jesus do is the question that needs to be asked. So look at the person's track record, and did he treat others as Jesus would? Right? I mean, if we really go back to the basics, Jesus was about preaching love. He was teaching us to live in a socially responsible way. So just look at the basic things that Jesus preaches, and are those candidates doing that? I mean, that would shut them right down, <laughs> wouldn't it? Um, the other question I have is snoops.com, how do you know that's right? Yeah, I mean, the, the internet is always a little bit scary because unlike what we used to rely on, we used to rely on these scientific journals and uh, you know, all of us who have submitted to those know that it takes years to get into those. They're scrutinized by the best people in the world and all that. So particular websites, uh, it is a little bit uh, daunting to, or difficult to decide what to rely on. And uh, they, I don't know the, the people who do that website personally, but I know from many years of looking to it for answers that uh, they seem to be uh, balanced and scientific and credible and accurate. Uh, and if I fact check them, I find that they're right. Uh, and, and they don't, you know, part of it is that the arguments aren't based on <coughs> opinion. Uh, they'll say, uh, you know, uh, here's the photo of the woman standing next to Clinton without the I'm with stupid t-shirt. Uh, so clearly, you know, it's proof that it was photoshopped. So that's the way they operate. They're really doing a good job of presenting proof. Uh, if it's a misattribution, uh, they'll, like, they, some celebrity was supposedly saying all these evil things in support of a candidate, and they uh, contacted the, the person. and. Uh, he said, no, I never said those things. So they're getting down to the, the nitty gritty, I think. I, uh, let's see. Cara has the mic. Cara, and then here and here. I'd like to plug a book called The Righteous Mind, which is about moral psychology. And it talks about how people do base their decisions more on their emotions than the facts. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that you. That doesn't mean that it's not important to give the facts, but you also have to consider the emotions underneath and address them, as opposed to say, oh, well, you're going to talk about the facts. Because that's the way people actually make decisions, is based on their emotions. Agreed. Uh, I just have a quick, just a quick question. Not 
Uh, if I were to try to look that up on the internet, what would that uh, uh, graph be called? We, we call it either the production possibilities curve or the production possibilities frontier. If you looked up production possibilities it's up, it's up. curve, it, both are used over and over. You'll find it either way. Yeah, production possibilities. Yeah. Or comparative advantage. I, I have a question here. Um, Use the mic. On, on bicycles and things, it yeah. may be better to be more and cheaper. But when we're talking about food and medications, how does free trade come to our best interest when you don't know what you're eating in your beef when they're bringing in things from the outside and you can't control your medicines. This diagram doesn't help me in importing foods that I can't control or medicines that I can't control. So you're, port you're uh, pointing out the importance of quality standards, certainly, that uh, wherever we get it, yes, certainly medicine is one of those things that we want more of instead of less but we, we don't want to lower our standards. We don't want to bring in medicine that might be of poor quality. Th this is um, constant quality. This is ceteris paribus, other things being equal, including the quality of the goods. So uh, nobody wants to lower our standards for quality. But I totally agree. But we are, because these are the only things we can really control. Uh, labor you, costs and material costs. You don't feel that we can control the quality of pharmaceuticals? No. Well, I hope we can, but... Yeah, I mean, there are ways to determine the, the uh, real drug, whether what's coming in from another country is the real thing or not. Uh, and if we don't have good enough ways, let's work together to find better ways. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's another of those things that we all agree on. We all agree we want more and better medicine. We all agree that we don't want to lower our standards. So instead of pretending that one side does, let's work together and figure out the best way to handle this. On food, I'm not sure I agree with you. Okay. I recently, I've been um, looking up, you know, when people give me information, then um, usually it'll say the source of it, uh, which news or, you know, whatever. And I've been looking those up to find out the credibility of the sources that the information is coming from. And that's helped me a great deal to figure out whether this is something, you know, it's a, another way of checking. Great idea. Yeah, always good. Thank you. Hi, this is Bert. Okay. So um, I'm actually a political science major at EKU and social justice, so I've studied a lot of this, especially in the current election in Div. Um, if you want a really good source and you don't want all the pretty words that go along with those, uh, go to Ballotpedia. It's actually fact-checked enough that I'm allowed to submit it as a scholastic source in my paper, so you know that it's good. <laughs> I'm not going to get kicked out of school for using it, you know. Uh, but Ballotpedia um, has tracked all the current senators, all the current House members, the current uh, presidential candidates, not just Hillary and Trump, but also um, Jill Stein and, at the time, Bernie Sanders. Um, but it shows how those that have political backgrounds have voted in the past, regardless of what they said about it. And then with Trump, where he has virtually no political background, it tracks his money. And so I think um, to answer, I think his question before, where it says like, what does the liberal side say about the conservative side? That might not be true. Is um, a lot of it revolves around where Trump puts his money. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain liberal organizations that say he's putting it into things that he's actually not. And so if you go on there, um, a lot of his campaign is centered around where his money's going, uh, which I think talks a little bit more actually than even voting, because um, voting can be constrained by uh, the political party one belongs to. His money's not constrained by the political party that he belongs to. So that's a good source. Um, and another thing that we really look at in current classes as to why Kentucky votes red is because of the polarity switch. So if you remember back to uh, Civil War and Reconstruction era, 
it was Republicans that were um, pushing for uh, anti-Jim Crow laws. They were the ones that were pushing for the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, Abraham Lincoln. Another thing, just do a search of the question. Just Google search. Did Jane Doe do X? And, uh, you know, the fact checking things are good. I use them too. But just ask a question. Did, you know, sometimes it'll be true, sometimes it, you know, but they, they will search the fact checked engines multiple and you'll get a lot of answers. Good idea. Thank you. Today, I had to make